Hello everybody, welcome to Tokyo. I am now using this awful uh, desktop web camera, but doesn't matter, the show must go on. Uh, today we have the founder of TokyoCheapo.com and we're gonna be talking about traveling to Japan, to Tokyo in 2020. Is it even possible? How about 2020, 2021, 2021? And what about um, travel uh, in the fall? What about travel anytime? Basically, let's get to this. Let's get moving. There's an echo in my headphones. That's why it's a little bit weird. I've got here on the phone Greg Lane, founder of TokyoCheapo.com. How are you doing? Hey, John. I'm, I'm doing well, thanks. I'm really hot and have had technical difficulties trying to start this live stream on time, but we, we were able to do it sort of. Um, how are you holding up? This, I, I've known Greg for about 15 years now. Yeah, quite a while. 2007, 2006. During the yeah. time, Tokyo 2.0, right? Yeah, 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 <laughs> man. Yeah, Tokyo 2.0, and then there was uh, Tokyo Garden Party. Right. And, uh, yeah, I never went along to your Yaki Niku events, but that was kind of from the same era, I think. Right, I did do those, Yeah. gosh, six, seven years we used to have Yaki Niku events where people would come on the 29th. Do you know why? The 29th? Oh, you ask me? Because um, it's Niku, yeah. That's right. 29th, Niku, Niku no Hi, Meat Day. We went out to a Yakiniki restaurant and had fun. That was great. And now we've sort of evolved into business owners and doing random things on the internet. When did TokyoCheapo.com yeah. start? Uh, we started in 2012. It was basically uh, not that long after the, the big earthquake in, in 2011. So, I mean, it wasn't immediately after. I mean, the earthquake was in March 2011. So, uh, my business at the time kind of uh, it wasn't going that well, so it kind of the earthquake kind of finished it off. So by the end of um, 2011, start of 2012, I was looking for something new to do. Um, so I started a blog with a friend of mine in, in uh, April 2012. So uh, his name's Chris Kirkland, so my, my co-founder. Okay, uh, yeah. And that's Tokyo Cheapo. Wow. So 2012, and, it, and it's grown into the, my go-to site for information on Japan. And Tokyo. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't think there was another site quite like what we were doing at the time. I mean, there was Japan Guide, but that's always been, you know, that's like the Wikipedia of travel. Right. Uh, whereas we wanted to be more of a talk, you know, talking about value, and um, you know, obviously at the time we we're po focused on on Tokyo only. Uh, although we've expanded outside of Tokyo since then. Right. You have um, Hong Kong Cheapo, Japan Cheapo, uh, London, London Cheapo, Cheapo, Singapore yeah. Cheapo. Ah, uh, it's coming. Coming. Wow. Well, it was coming. <laughs> you know, um, obviously, you know, plans are kind of on hold at the moment, but um, it was on the on the uh, on the roadmap. Yeah. So, uh, I, I, one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you today is because travel to Japan is just simply not possible. No. Yeah. It's zero. Nothing. Right. But we still have to go on. We have to march on. Yep. What has been uh, some of the things that people are searching for on Tokyo Cheapo? Now, I, I know that people would go there for travel advice, travel about events and, and yep. Wi-Fi and things like this, right? Yeah. What are people searching about now? Yeah, well, the practical stuff has completely you know, disappeared off the radar. So no one is looking you know, for information about how to get from Narita Airport to Tokyo or you know, um, you know how to do stuff. It's just gone completely. So people are looking for uh, tend to be looking for more kind of either escapist stuff. So if you're people from outside Japan looking for escapist stuff, so um, a popular article on Japan Cheapo, for example, is like uh, kind of like it's got you know twelve kind of really unique places in Japan. It's kind of got beautiful photography and all that kind of stuff. So. Um, and that, that's on Japan Cheapo, but on Tokyo Cheapo, the most popular article, apart from the ones aimed at the domestic audience, uh, is a, it's called um, Cheap Sex Beating the Cost of Loving in Tokyo. <laughs> Wait, I think so, I have that. Let me... There yeah. it is. <laughs> yeah, so um, it's actually, it's more innocent than it sounds. It's just about dating. Mm. So, um, you know, we, we, we kind of approach everything from a, like a you know, value kind of point of view. Um, so it's just, you know, how to have a cheap date, but, um, you know, we kind of like the title, so, uh, we went with it and to be honest, the, the kind of traffic it's getting, like, um, people are searching for things they probably won't find on that page. Right. 
So, uh, yeah, yeah. Basically, I, th I think it, I'm, I'm not sure. I haven't checked it recently, but I think if you search for Tokyo Sex, it's the first result. Yeah, so. Mr. Kirkland, author of that yeah, from 2018. Yeah. I know people should realize that the love hotels are a pretty good option for accommodations if you're looking for a cheap place to stay with amenities. Yeah, yeah. There, there are a few differences with uh, regular hotels, one of them being that uh, you're not actually supposed to go out of them. Right. You know, so it's, it's, it's kind of, it's a bit weird when you, um, if you go into one, then basically you can't get out until the next morning. Right. So, <laughs> Once you go in, you can't go out. That's I learned yeah, yeah. that the hard way. Yeah. I learned that the yeah. hard way. You have to bring all the goodies. So you could bring um, like food from convenience stores and things like this with you into the love yeah, hotel, yeah. and you can make a night of it. It's pretty much what we did. And at 10 a.m., yeah, I would backpack with my girlfriend, and we would yeah. use love hotels. Each room has a story, I guess. You can't you can't drop off your bag and go go out for dinner though, right? No. You've got to. Yeah. It's not that kind of an accommodation. No. But it's fun. Um, other things that I've seen on the website, let's let's look at here. We have um, secondhand shopping. What's going yeah, on with that? Yeah, that's quite big at the moment. Yeah. yeah um, I guess it's, uh, you know, people are stuck at home. They're looking at, you know, everyone's going crazy on Amazon and buying stuff. Um, and I think maybe people from overseas are also looking to, um, you know, since they can't come to Japan, they, they might want to experience it by, you know, buying some something. Um, although there is a problem with that at the moment because the, the postal service seems to have uh, broken down. Yeah. So. Yeah, I got packages that I'm trying to send to America. They're taking three to six months right now. It's not good. Yeah. It's not good. It's crazy. I did, a, I did a shopping live stream yesterday. It was kind of boring. People don't really want to <laughs> see a live stream of some dude shopping online. The concept what, is... What were you shopping for? You know, I wanted to show, like, Uniqlo and Mujirushi, and then I moved into right. Amazon. Um, right, right. Like, Omiyage. There's, if you just search Wafu, you get some pretty interesting thing, things that are only uh -huh. in Japan. Right. Yeah. Now, I'm looking through the website, and I know that... The number one, what is what is the number one article when people are traveling? It was in, I think it was like the Wi-Fi or something, the cell phone, uh, SIM cards. I, yeah, it was SIM cards, Wi-Fi, um, how to get from the airport. You know, traveling from Tokyo to Kyoto, Tokyo to Osaka, kind of like there's a lot of really practical information. So um, it's the kind of stuff that people look up right before they're going to visit, or you know, they they arrive at their hotel in Tokyo and they kind of. They're a bit bewildered, and they need to work out, you know, how they're going to do something. Right. So um, there's just really no demand for that kind of stuff anymore. Well, I have a I have a question for you. Um, Wi-Fi, um, pocket Wi-Fi, or SIM card? Which is the one that people should pick up? I personally prefer the SIM card. Um, basically, because I, I even though I've, I've got a family, but I usually. Um, when I go on my big trips, I travel by myself. So, uh, you know, it's just me and my, you know, I can use hotel Wi-Fi when I need to check the computer. All I need is a SIM card, basically. So, um, yeah, and, you know, I don't I don't like carrying around the extra weight of the, the Wi-Fi unit. Yeah. They also have a bad battery life. I found these uh, pocket Wi-Fi routers won't make it through the whole day. Then you're stuck with this device yeah, yeah. with no connectivity at all. Yeah, the, the only problem with the sims is they're uh, japan's a bit strange with the um especially if you've got an iphone right so you have to you have to create a profile or something it's kind of it's like a, you know 10-step process it's not just put the card in the in the phone and turn, you know switch it on it's it's kind of more complicated than that more complicated than it should be it is but we need the internet in order to get around yep. japan because people don't speak English that well, and you can always search the information for yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Google Maps is great. Yeah. So, um, how did we get around when we first came here in Japan? How long have you been here? Uh, I've been here since 2000, March 2000. To 2000. So I, I, rem I remember you used to go to things like Yahoo Maps or something, and and used to print out, you know, print out a p piece of paper, and then you'd, you know, go to where you're going and try to work out, a, you know, where you where it is on the on the page. I was telling people how big Yahoo still is here. It's crazy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. SoftBank inv investing into the brand, I think. So. 
yeah, well, I think it's um, probably SoftBank's cash cow that they're using to, you know, put money into all the loss-making things like WeWork. Yeah, it's so. crazy because back then, I and we had to go to internet cafes. I never had dial-up in my apartment. I used to go to those yep. gray telephones to, pl- to plug in and <laughs> yeah, download yeah. my oh, email. Yes. They still have I, those I around. Could, I didn't know you could do that. Oh, you really? Could, you could... I, you, no, I, I always had, I, like, I had dial-up when I first came here. Oh, like, wow. Um, yeah. I didn't have a phone. It was it was either to buy a telephone number. It cost, I think, $800 yeah, to I get the that. telephone number from NTT. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the other option was cell phone. At the time, it was still kind of crazy unknown. So I had a cell phone, but I couldn't get the I, the email through it. But Because yeah. I was using America Online in America. So it dialed long distance right. to the U.S. Oh, wow. to download. It was only a minute. It would download yeah. all the emails. I would write them out, and then I would upload it. It was only a minute, but... I, I think I think Japan always has and still is. It's, it's, it's always been quite... Um, there's a dichotomy, right? There's the really high-tech stuff, the really low-tech stuff. So, like, even when I came like here 20 years ago, there was the super high-tech cell phones. They were, like, miles ahead of anywhere else. But then you had the... And everything else, like you know, having to buy, pay fifty thousand yen for a, um, a phone line or the dial-up internet, all that kind of stuff, it was really behind. And it's kind of the same. It's like uh, same now. I mean, like a lot of the stuff's really, really advanced, but you still get that really um, a mix of really, really old stuff. Like you know, still using faxes. Faxes. Yeah, I had somebody ask me for a fax the other day. <laughs> Did you send me your travel itinerary by fax? Like, mm, yeah, I guess so got to go to the supermarket to get the faxes over there and pay a couple dollars to send one out yeah. 200 yen um right now people that are looking at tokyo cheapo and if you are let me get the shot here if you are um at home and you want something to do and you're dreaming of going to japan just go to tokyo cheapo or japan cheapo and you can start looking at and planning your trip from this website it's pretty amazing tokyocheapo.com we're talking right now to the founder of tokyocheapo.com greg lane somebody i've known for wow well over a decade now and i want to ask you about travel to japan but first um a lot of the people that are using the site are expats like me and they're looking at um the things that have been in the news one of them is the the um uh payment what can you tell me about that? I'm going to pull it up on the screen, the article for this. Sure. So uh, I think a lot of countries are doing similar stuff. It's um, it's kind of like a relief payment for citizens and like a, something to get the economy going. Right. So originally the government announced a 300,000 yen kind of targeted uh, package. So the idea was families who are having trouble could um, apply for this 300,000 yen grant. But that they scrapped it, and now it's a completely uh, non-means-tested uh, grant of 100,000 yen per person. Right. So you could be Masayoshi Son, like, you know, you could be worth a billion dollars, and you'll still get this 100,000 yen payment. Uh, and there, w- there was actually a rumor when it first came out that foreigners or foreign uh, non-Japanese citizens might be um, barred from receiving it, but um, luckily that never never happened. So it's, it's, it's available to anyone in Japan who is on a... Um, valid kind of residency visa. So if you're a student, if you're um, if you're here on a working holiday, if you're here, uh, if basically if you have a residence card, then you can you can get this payment of one hundred thousand yen. The the article sets up how you can get the payment and what you need to do it. It's pretty well done with graphs and. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's that's the whole thing about the site. I mean I, I think it's one of the strengths is we do really good how to how to guides. You know. Right. Um, step by step uh, so you know we've been doing that for travel but um, you know since there's not really a travel market we've we've gone back to the the kind of domestic audience right there's still a lot of stuff here no events the thing no no that was another big part of our site that's it's gone down to zero pretty much Tokyo Cheapo is one of the only sites that continuously is redoing the old articles with new information I don't see that a lot that's a secret Oh, is it just <laughs> <laughs> no, that's all right. It's all right. Um, I mean, yeah, that's that's pretty much what we do. We don't. Um, I mean, probably about half the the articles we publish are updates. 
So, you know, we, we produce new information, but, you know, the, the timeless stuff, you know, we, it constantly changes. You have to, you know, keep up to date. So, I mean, the, a lot of the tourist stuff, we, you know, that's on hold. We'll, um, we'll like that when there's uh, some kind of indication that the market will recover. But, uh, you know, we're, yeah, we're, we're a lot of the, the, um, the, the content for locals at the moment. So guides on, you know, how to do banking. Right. Um, you know, problems with visas, all that kind of stuff. Stuff. Yeah, the banking one was a uh, is a big one because I, I when I first started my business, I couldn't open a bank account anywhere, despite having a personal yeah. one. Yeah. There's a lot of things that uh, require experience. Before Tokyo Cheapo and, and the internet, it was all about like trial and error, and it took ages. You wasted a lot of time, and now with the resources, yeah, you don't waste exactly. time. You just go straight to Tokyo Cheapo or uh, the internet and you can find the answer it's incredible or go to youtube youtube has yep, answers definitely. yeah <laughs> stay busy watching videos um now the big elephant in the room that a lot of people are thinking about is when can they start to travel back to japan when can they come here or or visit and it, it seems like 2020 looks it might not be be this year what do you what do you think I... in your crystal ball I don't know. Um, I'm not very optimistic. I'm trying to be, um, I'd like to be optimistic, but I think you have to be a realist. And uh, uh, I think probably we're not going to get any, you know, realistic Japan until there's a, there's some kind of um, vaccine. So, you know, I mean, the, the other possibility is, uh, I mean, I've heard of, I'm from New Zealand, so um, New Zealand's done a pretty good job of like clamping down on the on the on COVID-19, and and they're talking about like opening up um, like common travel markets. For example, you know, like if if New Zealand gets the you know number of coronavirus cases down to zero, and Australia does as well, and they can open up and they can connect. Um, so you know, and they're talking about maybe you know they could bring South Korea and and uh, Hong Kong into that. So if if Japan you know, maybe manage to get things down to zero, then that, that could happen. But um, I think it has to be it has to be a match in both markets. And you can't have like one country that has you know rampant, you know, um, COVID-19 and one that doesn't. They're right. not going to have have some kind of travel between each country. So um, and the, the other thing is just the demand. Um, you know, going back to New Zealand again, um, there are no direct flights between Japan and New Zealand at the, at the moment. And even when that recovers, it's probably not going to happen straight away. It's going to be a slow build up. So I would say, you know, don't make any plans for Japan, uh, you know, before may, maybe mid next year. Ship. Ship. Yeah. Yeah. Come by, come by, by cruise ship. That's probably the best idea. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, it's still, <laughs> still an issue cruise ship industry not doing well support your local cruise no, no. lines maybe really i don't know <laughs> don't, you did not hear that yeah, from me I, did i say I, that I, I don't i wouldn't i wouldn't really be upset if the cruise industry went out of business but that's just me i've never been on a cruise i wouldn't know i oh i i haven't either but they're they're just terrible um polluters they you know they dump all their sewage in the city they, you know it's uh not I, I mean that's that's another thing about the site we've always tried to encourage sustainable travel so um you know we have articles on on how to you know travel sustainably around the country you know what th things you shouldn't do to encourage kind of bad tourist tourism practices and stuff like right. that um obviously you know flying by flight's actually quite bad for the environment but you know it's um there's worse ways trying to make it cruise ship yeah yeah, yeah cruise ship <laughs> see that's what i like that about businesses small businesses that were grown by people who live here we really care about and this is the way i approach my own show i like to uh highlight local businesses if i can show the local culture the history behind it um the reasons why uh so when you visit there you're a little bit more prepared i think you put that same kind of love into the articles that you write for tokyocheapo.com yeah. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I, th I think um you know we we quite complimentary like the youtube stuff is um where people go to kind of imagine or get ideas and um you know get some inspiration and then when they you know start planning the trip they come to us and we have the you know the precise information about how much something costs and uh you know where you catch the bus and and all that kind of really really detailed information right 
Let's go so to thanks. our callers, which are actually chatters here. We have some chatter in the online community. So I'm going to take a look here at Shane. Shane Posh, thank you so much, Shane. Much love. Uh, Shane's in Canada. Let's see here. Um, o Shane. OCD Stig writes in here, elephant in the room. Do you mean all, me with all the pounds I packed on? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so if you have any questions for Greg Lane from Tokyo Cheapo, now would be the time. Questions about train travel um, that you don't buy a rail pass before arriving in Tokyo. Should you buy your rail pass in advance or should you do that after you arrive? Uh, you can do either. Um, I, actually, they, they did have a trial for um, buying it locally. Like, um, and what happened is they kept renewing that. So I think it was, you know, they always say it's set to expire in a few months. So um, I imagine, I'm, I'm not sure if they're going to renew that. Yeah. I mean, no one's buying rate rail passes at the moment. But um, if it's available when you, when you travel, then it doesn't really make much difference. The only difference is um, if you buy it before you come, it's marginally cheaper. There's a small surcharge for buying it in the country. Um, otherwise, it's more or less the same. And I mean, you know, I guess if you if you like to be really organized and have everything ready before you go, then, you know, it's kind of nice to have it in your hands when you arrive. Right. Oh, that's a good comment by um, Tasty Chronicles here. Cruise ship travel is almost all inclusive, which is why people prefer that. Right, right. Yeah, that makes, that makes sense here. Here's one from Peso. I'm curious on the 100,000 yen Japanese yen handout. Does that mean anyone mm -hmm. with a Zaidyo, including foreign workers, international students, can get it? I think you had to be here for three months, um, be a resident for three months, and have had paid taxes? I'm not sure. International students? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think it's something like three months. If you've been in the country for three months and you're on that, um, if you've got a Zaidyo card, then you get it. Okay. So it's... Yeah. Just about everybody. Even I mean, even ba babies babies can get it. It's not just for workers or anything. We should have had that baby by now, kind of. Oh, so so the entire family. <laughs> I thought it was just um, the three hundred thousand yen payment no, would be no. for the head head of family owner or well, household. Well, it goes to the it goes to the householder, like the the head of household, but um, it's calculated based on the number of people. Ah, oh, see, that's where I lose. So, them. so are you sure you're the head of household? Because like in a lot of I um, am. Couples in Japan, the, the Japanese partner is the, the head of whole household. So, I, look, if you, you ask have, my wife, might... Kanai would probably say something differently, but I like to think that it would be me. But it, I would invite her over that. I don't know. Um, yeah, but if you if I I do think that they put that a good article on uh, Tokyo Chipo on. Um, how to receive the payment. It, it's pretty easy, so you could just follow this guide and you'll get money if you live here. <laughs> it's yeah, yeah the, 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 the forms haven't been sent out yet. They're, they're going to be sent out um, this month, apparently. Oh, I thought it was all so online. Pay, no. Well, you can do it online, but um, that's not ready either. Ah. So, yeah, there's, there's two ways to do it, online or you fill out the form. But if you do it online, you have to get an IC chip reader um right attachment for your computer oh oh so yeah and, and you have to have one of those my number cards like not not the the one with the number but the one with the uh the the photograph and the chip and stuff oh yeah no very few so, people uh, have that because they don't want to give the government their photo yeah. and stuff really that well that's the, what i was told don't do it because you don't want to give oh, okay. but okay I, eventually people will have to get it but you don't have to it's like getting. What would you want you to put your picture yeah, yeah, on your you social you security card? You don't have to get it. In the U.S., we have a social yeah. security card, this piece of paper, but nobody has a picture on it. In Japan, the the right. uh, my number is a, basically the social security number. There's two kinds: one with the picture and one without. I just was told by friends, don't do that. Danny, thank you. Uh, Danny writes in. Uh, Johnny Greg, have a nice day. Um, Wow. So everyone is getting very specific, Greg. Um, Mel okay. Pay writes in, do you think mid-May 2021 is good? Uh, <laughs> right? I don't know. I, I, I can't. I don't have that much of a crystal ball, but, you know, I still think it's dependent on the uh, the vaccine. Right. They're just not going to let people travel. I mean, you know, 
officially Japan is locked, not locked down, but locked out. You know, like there's no um, foreigners are actually allowed in. Yeah. It's, if you're Japanese, you can come home, but that's it. It's closed now, according to the JNTO site, which you can see all the attractions that are closed, as well as the nationalities that are banned right now. <laughs> all of them, basically. It's basically all of them, yeah. yeah. And even the, yeah. Foreign, the Japanese nationals returning have to go through two weeks of quarantine now. Um, yeah. So the airports are basically domestic flights and the international terminal is is closed down almost i think there's some yeah. refugees in there that are s- sitting out their two-week quarantine there right right uh, haneda and narita yeah, there are still quite a few domestic flights like um yeah i don't know it's it's quite strange like um i, I mean that's a whole different topic the you know the the not lockdown in japan but uh like right now in golden week like one of the kind of uh like the the surrounding prefectures and even okinawa they were saying uh you know people in tokyo don't come <laughs> don't come on uh on, on holiday during golden week like there's no restriction you know you can actually go if you want to and i, I heard something like sixty thousand people were going to fly down to okinawa yeah so people from from tokyo like this the center of the uh outbreak and they're all going down to uh you know, it's, it's, it's kind of insane. It's, it's, well, everyone's stir crazy. They're cabin fevered out. They just want to go somewhere. Yeah. And they're thinking, look, we've been in here for like three weeks. Let's just go. But a lot of them just couldn't cancel their packages either. So if they didn't uh, okay. cancel, they wouldn't get their money back. So they weren't left with too many choices. Either go or lose money. What are you gonna do? You, you end up going. And uh, yeah, yeah. Ishigakijima, for example, has, what, two hospitals? Does not have the capacity to treat all these tourists that are coming in, and let alone the locals that get it from the tourists coming in. So, um, yeah, I know the numbers were down. I think flight, 93% down compared to last year. Shinkansen travel, yeah. 95% down compared to last year. So people just weren't Crazy. going anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. The Golden Week... Yeah, I... I um... I live in central Tokyo, so there's a there's a new um, flight route for um, yeah. airplanes going into Haneda. So at, at three o'clock every day, they they start flying over, uh, you know, near my house. It's and uh, there's qu- there's quite a few of them still. Oh oh now, I I hardly yeah, hear yeah. them. I'm more towards the sea, towards the uh, Tokyo okay. Bay, uh, the harbor, Sumida River, nature. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, that other side of town. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's quite controversial because they, they fly very low over parts of, um, especially places like Takanawa, um, when they were going into Hanada Airport. So, uh, yeah, there's, um, and I really don't know why they did it now. That was supposed to be for some kind of, uh, extra capacity during the Olympics. Right. They're going to like change the route, but there's no, you don't, we don't need any extra capacity. So they're, they're just annoying all the, um, people in central Tokyo that have to work from home and have their windows open. If you ask me, I think so, they just yeah. wanted it as a PR thing where people could get a really good shot of the city, because true, true, it would be. I'm sure it's a spectacular, it's um, wonderful approach. It's it's like you haven't done it, right? Uh, I haven't no, been on a flight started. since yeah, since they okay. changed the route, which was on the fringe yeah. of this coronavirus. Well, it, was only, it was only the first of April right. they changed it, so yeah. yeah. But we could hear them, and then a couple of days after they changed it, international flights just were like being canceled all over the board and. Yeah. Now it's where I live. It's I. It's too quiet. I'm waiting for helicopters or airplanes, uh-huh. and there's nothing. There's not even people on the street. It's awful. You know, I'm used to sleeping with ambient sounds of city, and it's crickets yeah. almost. There's like three crickets in the entire. There's probably city. an iPhone app for that. I actually, can... yeah. There's also one for campfires, which helps you if you want to have a. Oh, really? Yeah. Living room camp. You haven't done living room camping? Come on, you're one of the only people in the world now that hasn't done living room. <laughs> yeah, get the tent out and put it up, and the kids love it, and adults over under sixty-seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My my daughter did put a uh, tent up on the balcony, so uh, you wouldn't let her in the living room. No, that was just during the day. <laughs> uh, no, she, she, I, I think she, she was going a bit stir crazy as well, so she just wanted a bit of an escape, so she put up a tent on the on the balcony. So. Very good. So um, I'm, I'm I got a couple more questions here, but what content do you yeah. have? Uh, coming up from on Tokyo Cheapo in the next couple of months. Is there anything special? Um, 
we're, we're basically just trying to be kind of useful and responsive to people living in Japan at the moment. So, uh, like, one thing we're coming up, we're doing, working on right at the moment is an article about, uh, like, online courses and uh, classes that you can take. So, a lot, a lot of people are offering um, stuff over Zoom, like, you can do, you know, Japanese lessons, you can do um, yoga, cooking classes, um, you know, sake tasting, all these kind of things. So, we kind of want to make a big uh, list of that. And to be honest, I mean, a lot of that stuff would actually, would be open to people outside Japan as well. Um, and you know, it, it's kind of a way to travel to Japan. You know, if you want to do a yoga class in your um, in your lounge in in the US and have a Japanese instructor, it's, <laughs> you can do that. So for those joining us, we're talking with TokyoCheapo.com founder Greg Lane, a uh, friend of mine for quite a long time. Uh, we got some questions here from viewers all over the world. This is also the time of the live stream where you can write in where you're watching from. It's always neat to see all the all the locations, every single continent. There's a viewer watching. Um, Lai's questions are are to me. That's not good. Don't ask me questions. <laughs> ask. Okay, Nasha Broad writes it's in here. Um, Thoughts on the incentive program to use cashless payments in Japan? We're taking advantage of for tourists. Any thoughts on the Apple Wallet or other mobile wo wallet alternatives? What do you think, Greg? Oh, cashless payments. Um, cashless. Have a nice cashless, yeah. as they say. Um, it's. I think it's running until... The, the, the incentive program is only running until June, I think, this year. That's not going to um, help tourists. And what it is... No, no, it's not. I don't think... They may extend it if they want to um, like encourage spending and you know that kind of thing. But um, the deal was you got 2% or 5%. So, for example, if you go to the convenience store and you pay with your, uh, um, like your transport card, like your Suica or your Pasmo or um, credit card, you get 2% back. Um, and a lot of other places are also doing 5% back. So you can, there's like a supermarket near me that you can get 5% back. Um, so the idea was to encourage people in Japan, you know, it's notorious, I would say, for, you know, using cash. People, you know, ret routinely carry like $1,000 of cash around. But, um, you know, they're trying to shift people to um, th these cashless methods. Um, in terms of the the wallets, I haven't had a lot of success with that. I've been trying to try that out. I don't have an iPhone, so I can't do, um, um, what is it called, Apple Pay? Right. Um, but I, I have an Android handset, but it's not um, compatible with the the systems in Japan, so I'm kind of a bit lost. I, I generally just put stuff on my on my Pasmo. I think that's probably the best way to take advantage of it. Right. Um, you can load up to twenty thousand yen on your Pasmo, so they gotta up that. That's the best way, I think. They gotta up that seriously. Yeah, yeah, it is crazy. It is crazy. I keep having to get you know, the you know convenience store to load more money onto it. Where can you load it up? So, I know that you. I, I usually do it at the train stations, but is there more than one place where you can top up a Suica card? You can do it at any convenience store, pretty much. Wow. So, um, the Seven Bank um, ATMs at Seven Eleven, you can do it kind of automatically. You just put. And it's the same as like um, using a Nanako, which is their kind of their proprietary point card thing. Right. So you just load up the money. Um, but you can go to any other convenience store and you hand over your card and you give them the cash and they load it onto the card. Wow. Which is obviously not a, not a very good kind of social distancing thing. <laughs> so if you really, you know, if you want to avoid human contact, you should go to 7-Eleven or, or a metro station, I guess. Right. I, d I didn't know about that one. I, I've been doing it only at the train stations. Yeah. It's been, um, speaking of social distancing, 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 um, mm. how's Tokyo doing? What do you? What are your thoughts on on the uh, state of emergency? The, as we said, it's a soft state of emergency. If you go out, you're not penalized. Nobody will come after you. There's no fines. Mm -hmm. You won't go to jail, but you'll just be stared really heavy at an old lady that'll make you feel uncomfortable, and you'll rethink all of your life decisions. It's pretty harsh. <laughs> but I, I've noticed in Tokyo, yeah. people have a, because Tokyo, we, we're crammed into all these places. Social distancing is just like. It's weird concept for people. Yeah, I, I think generally people in in Tokyo have far too much trust in, in masks. Yeah. Um, and I think 
in general, it's a, it's a kind of like masks or social distancing. They don't, you know, they think as long as you wear a mask, then it doesn't really matter if we're, I'm standing right behind you in the supermarket. So, um, yeah, but I, I haven't really observed much social distancing in Japan. Like I, I even see, um, um, I mean, some of the restaurants are still open around, around me. And I see, you know, if I walk past them on a, at lunchtime, I see like work groups even in there. Like, you know, not know. even not families or anything they're just you know having having lunch together so uh it's it's quite yeah i, I want to go in there and say break it up everybody just break it up get apart social distancing yeah you're, you're infected your pe- family you might have it look at you you know i i don't do that but it's an urge i fight every day yeah. in tokyo you go to a traffic light if you do walk around go to the supermarket people are like mm. on my shoulder at the traffic light i'm like dude Social distancing, you know, just yeah, yeah. yeah. It's. Do you, do you actually say that? You say just the Yeah, I told a lady at the supermarket before they put in. Now they had marks on the floor in the supermarket. Before that, uh-huh. the lady was like on top of me, and I said, She said, ah, 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 yeah. and then she stayed apart first because I wasn't Japanese saying that, and second, yeah, you say it in English. Have, it have you really tried coughing? Freak- what? Have you tried coughing? <laughs> is that what you do no no oh, I, haven't, I haven't tried it i think i will i might do that that'll really freak people out that'll freak out the cashier though the lady at the register yeah, yeah. that's who knows me from you know living in the neighborhood sorry lady yeah they have vinyl now they have um all the places have uh, protection and covering makes it a little bit better but um life has been hard here now i know tourists can't come here and uh, we were told yesterday by Prime Minister Abe that we shouldn't even be traveling uh, to other prefectures now. So we're pretty much locked yeah. s- softly at home in Tokyo. Yeah. 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 I, I think um, I, I, I don't want to get too much into sociology, but I think it's a really interesting observation that, um, you know, the stereotype of Japan is that everyone kind of follows the rules and, and um, you know, everyone's in lockstep and they all, you know, do the same thing and, and stuff. And I think this is kind of really good evidence that, you know, a lot of people are following the, the lockdown rules, but a lot of people just don't care. Yeah. They're just doing whatever they want. Like, um, I, I mean, the irony is like I, I went, went for a walk, to, I went shopping the other day and I saw a bunch of foreigners, like probably, I mean, there's quite a f- few foreigners living in my neighborhood, all wearing masks. The only people not wearing masks were like Japanese people. Right. So, you know, it's it's kind of flips things, flips things on its head because it's you know i guess there's always been a, a you know a certain part of society in japan where they they really don't want to go along with the you know they just want to do what they want to do like the people playing so, pachinko um, right now yeah it was open yesterday yeah and no one was social distancing yeah. it was crazy to see the images like what are they thinking pachinko smokers they're together for yeah. hours coughing it was i don't know yeah putting their fingers all over those um, steel balls. We, we are more critical maybe because we live here. I'm just saying. I, yeah. I think if we compare the situation in, in Japan compared to anywhere else in the world, maybe besides New Zealand, um, it's pretty good here, I think. But because we live here, we see this day, day in and day out, and we might be a little bit more critical than others. <laughs> but for me, I just right, I want to yeah. tell oh. people, like, dude separate it's hard yeah look at me cringing because kanai and i can't even <laughs> the rivers are awful be be happy you don't live near a river everybody is coming to the river it's ah right oh, it's, it's like the nice weather there's probably a lot of people, a lot of people down there today yeah thanks a lot a i day. was gonna take a walk with kanai <laughs> to get some sun we need some sun for it's getting it's hard ah but we can't yeah. travel within Japan, which makes it hard to write content as well as film content. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the state of emergency was extended to May 31st. And then after that, we're not quite sure. And by state of emergency, um, this, things have started to open up. Um, libraries are open. Um, oh, really? Yeah, there's, they've, just like in the United States, they've started to open up a few places mm-hmm. Um, I right, had a right. graph last night, and I think the numbers look like they're not really 
I, I don't want to get into the politics behind it, but I just we're not testing a lot, but the numbers are pretty low. No. For oh, no. I, I've I've got one interesting number for you there. Like okay. um, New Zealand has tested almost as many many people as Japan with a population of two million. A uh, five, oh, five million. Okay, so sorry. Like Japan has twenty five the twenty five times the population. So five million. <laughs> are you counting the sheep? No. Uh, well, if I count the sheep, it's we're up to about twenty. I think. Okay. So. <laughs> Yeah. I love New Zealand. I love New Zealand. <laughs> yeah. Well, very good. Um, let's see here. Any last questions before we leave? Actually, I don't really have that much to do today. I might do a Twitch live stream, um, a new platform that I went over to, and uh, a couple other things, uh, editing. But what's your schedule like these days besides, you know? Uh, to be honest, my, my work day is not that much different than usual. Like, I... I I always kind of work from home or, or work remotely. So the main difference is I've just got my family here all the time, like 24 hours a day. So, um, but in terms of my schedule, like um, I'm kind of, it's technically golden week. It's, right. um, we're, we're, we've got a public, it's happy children's day. Um, but I don't know, they all, they all kind of blend into one. I, I'm kind of um, doing a bit of work, but kind of taking it easy at the same time. Yeah, same here. Wow, the lockdown is lifted in Vietnam. That's crazy. Wow. Uh, anybody can, I still work from home, but avoid going outside as possible. So it's, it, the situation is changing just country by country. So that means international mm -hmm. travel. I don't think, now my crystal ball says September is when oh, it'll wow. start traveling again. Yeah, it just seems yeah. like um, life will start to get back to normal because to be honest, we cannot without a vaccine all we can do is learn to live with this and mm -hmm. life must go on travel must happen and i think non-essential travel will open up in june and then in september tourism will start and then the smart ones might stay away till 2021 but the ones who have to mm. go will find some pretty good bargains i think for international travel uh, yeah i don't know about bargains i think there's um I mean, they've already, already talked about, like, refitting planes, so they have, like, more pitch between the the rows. So, you know, right. the, the economics won't allow for um, cheap flights, I think. Interesting. So because of this and we us having to live with it, the seats are going to be... Mm -hmm. they, they were cramming people in yeah, to make the space. money. It, now they're going to have to charge it'll more. Be like, it'll be like premium economy in, in, like, in, in economy, I, I guess. That's my, that's my pick. I can't complain with that, although the going tra traveling international would be more expensive almost impossible for a family i think but uh yeah yeah business travel will go on and it's probably better that people didn't travel that might be a good thing until 2021 um safely i figure spring looks like um the best possibility um I don't. I hope so. I hope that yeah, we that's our biggest hope. Hope so. Even if the vaccine is ready in September to get it out to billions of people, it's gonna take months. So the earliest mm. and the winter I feel is gonna be pretty harsh. Um, so I'm I figure by spring if this wakachin, which you say vaccine in Japan, Japanese, <laughs> the wakachin will yeah. be ready and will be will have a cherry blossom festival like no other. Because the Olympics were supposed to be in it'll the be, spring. You remember? The Olympics were supposed to be. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. We wanted the spring Olympics. That would have been so awesome. But it's planned for next summer. Thanks, Greg. Um, we don't have any more questions for yeah, you. Thanks, John. And I appreciate your time. Everybody, this is uh, Greg Lane from TokyoCheapo.com. Really appreciate it. And if you need something to do to look and plan your trip for 2021, that's why I kind of want to end it when you can come to Japan. TokyoCheapo.com and Japan Cheapo is the place to go. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. All right. See you later. Bye-bye. Yeah, I really appreciate having my friend Greg on uh, the show. It, I've known him for, wow, I, I believe it was 2007 when we started to um, talk about tech and the Japan community, the expat community here had a lot of people um, coming together to these meetings and events and from this 2006 7 8 9 we made some really 
strong relationships with people that are now doing some amazing things in the city of Tokyo and around Japan. And that was an age um, after the internet just was blowing up and smartphones had come out. Uh, I also had started my business, which was very much based on uh, the internet, right? So I make videos. I have my own company, and I've been making videos um, to teach Japanese how to speak English in a comedy way. In fact, some of them are still on iTunes, unfortunately. Uh, and I'll have a live stream telling you what I did today. Um, yeah, I just got a question from Greg saying I thought we would get more questions. So did I. We didn't get enough questions for Greg. But maybe we'll have him back on. The reason why is because I like having Greg on. I like having uh, Tokyo Cheapo as a resource because they also have reporters and they're getting a good feel on what's going on around the country. Now, I, I have my ear to the ground to hear what's happening. And that's how I make um, not just these live streams, but also the edited videos, um, which will be on a new channel this month. And... Um, these resources like Tokyo Chipo are vital. To have them come onto the show and, and discuss what's trending on the website is pretty interesting to me because I want to know what people are searching for. And if um, you know travel to Sendai is big or travel to Kochi is big, then I might go down there and make some videos to try and, and meet the demand of people who want to know that kind of content. And Tokyo Chipo has been now doing it for five, um, wow, eight years now. Time flies. They also have a book on Amazon. So if you're interested in, in uh, a Tokyo guide, there's a Tokyo Cheapo guide. I remember they were, they were doing the campaign for this, sis, and I thought that was great um, that they put this book all online so you can get that in digital format and learn about the city of Tokyo. Um, the guides are helpful. Uh, there's The Lonely Planet, but there's also other ones like, you know, just watching only in Japan is, is pretty good too, I think. It's not bad. Um, I'll, I'll take uh, some questions here on uh, the internet. Um, last night's Sweet Hightower, thank you so much. Um, appreciate it. I love these animated emoji. Danny, I saw that yours coming. I hope you're doing good in Canada, Danny. Um, the, the stream from yesterday I put as unlisted. So if you have the link in the notifications from the email, you can watch it. But it was just me online shopping. It wasn't really that exciting. And I thought that um, people who weren't subscribers, it just was not, it didn't seem like it would be interesting. So I took it off. I mean, it was interesting. I, I like to use this channel to experiment as well and to try new things. And shopping online, live with people to show Japanese sites was a concept. I don't know if it went well enough, but it, I just put it unlisted, but it's not private. You can still watch it if you have the link. Um, yeah, click, also click the like button. I think that it's um, pretty cool if you let me know what works for you as well. The like button is a way for me to know that you like this kind of content, which is interviews with my friends who have a lot of things to say about Japan and a lot of experience and knowledge too. These are Audio Technica. I think they were the cheapest ones. I just needed it for editing to kind of cancel out the noise from outside. But they've come in useful for live streaming. They've come in useful here. Uh, are you going to create more only in Tokyo videos or have you dropped that? No, I haven't dropped it at all. Um, there's a new channel coming in the middle of this month. And the content will be going there. And I'll have an announcement um, at the middle of the month as well to explain what's going on with the channel. Um, right now, I cannot go out and make, just like uh, Greg can't go out and report and get stories from all around Japan, I can't go out and um, um, film content. And if I do, I, would, I believe there'd be a backlash because this is a time where people should be staying home. I think we're on the fringe of opening it up a lot more. Uh, but the numbers, um, especially in Tokyo and in the seven prefectures, don't look good so it's not it's not cool to be traveling um, and trying to make money off of it or make content but I'll still try to find ways to do it and I also have content that I can edit and put online as well um, I've got a queue of, of stories just waiting uh, which will be a lot of fun for 
me to put that up and see some of the comments from winter and last year when I looked a little bit younger. Uh, do you think hostels will take a big hit? Yes. A lot of them are, have been going out of business. Um, there's some hotels that I know that have been out of, gone out of business. A lot of uh, Yokan, family-run Yokan, which have closed. A lot of them won't go out of business because they don't have overhead, but they are shut down, and that's heartbreaking. So that's why I think um, we're on the fringe of resuming domestic travel. There's nothing that we can do to prevent the spread of it. We can just slow it down. So opening up travel, um, if we have medications like um, um, the one from Fujifilm uh, and some of the other medi medications that help to treat it, that is some sort of treatment that we have. Right now we have nothing. So we just need to wait until we get those drugs. And um, I, I believe domestic travel will start up again in June just because the, it's an economic decision. The businesses need it. Um, and if the numbers go down, then there's even more reason to do that. But the seven prefectures were Hokkaido, uh, Saitama, Tokyo, Kanagawa, Osaka, Kyoto, Hyogo. I don't know if Kyoto was in there and F Fukuoka. And um, I don't think Ibaraki was one of them. Um, but the region around Tokyo, Osaka, the city, city, city centers. Um, Mir, M-I-R, John, I suspect people like yourself and Greg will be extremely helpful for Japanese tourism when international travel resumes. Uh, whenever that is, stay well. Thank you. Yeah, ab absolutely. And I, I believe that um, a lot of people were coming to Japan because of what Greg was doing. He put, in so put up some really good content that um, attracted people to Japan, give information that took any kind of fear or stigma or... Oh, Japan is so far away. It's so different than Europe. Should I go there? For Americans, Europe um, was way more popular than coming towards the Pacific side. But now uh, the Pacific side is opening up because of uh, sites like Greg's Tokyo Cheapo, where it's affordable. Tokyo is not as expensive as you would think. You can get by on a shoestring budget. Um, and then, you know, there's only in Japan, which helps you travel outside of Tokyo and your living room. Um, that's one of the reasons why I started the, the show. Just like Greg, after the 2011 earthquake, uh, the Great Tohoku earthquake, we were both uh, didn't have a lot of work. We didn't have a lot of things we could do. And I went up to Tohoku. I'll tell the story as well on the new channel. Um, I went up to Tohoku uh, to volunteer on food runs um, with a food bank here. And um, we, I saw the devastation. And I stayed here to, to help the country. And then in 2012... You start thinking, what can you do to help? And I couldn't go up to volunteer up in Tohoku. They just had a lot of uh, uncertainty, and they already had a ton of volunteers. One of the things that I, I could do was to start something like Only in Japan and help tourism. And and Greg, one of the things that he could do was to write articles and, and for his love for this country. We've both been here for over 20 years. He has a family, and I have a family, and we are going to be here for probably another 20 years, the way it looks. Um, I'm probably will see Greg for a beer one of these days uh, sooner than later. But um, that's where only in Japan comes from. And that's where I believe Tokyo Cheapo comes from. A really not just a business p point of view. It it's becomes from a love of Japan and what we could do for our home at a time when it was really hurting. So when I see your comment here, Mayor from New Zealand, it really brings back the reasons why I started only in Japan and to begin with, which was after the great Tohoku earthquake and a desire to want to bring more information about Japan in a fun, educational way. Not me, not about me, but more about the stories that I could find. And like the Naked Man Festival. Like, it's weird when you see it. It's like, what's going on there? But I went and instead of just focusing on the butts, I focused on the history, the story behind it, and that made a lot of sense. And I think a lot of creators um, picked up on that as well. And the style of YouTube um, started to change, and you saw more professional productions coming in. And I could see that in 2013, that the vlog would still always be around, but people would start putting more professional type of content on YouTube because everyone had their eyeballs on this platform, on YouTube. And that's why I, I will never leave youtube just the staff is awesome the people are are pretty good at youtube uh they they 
you know, it, at the level that I'm at, I'm somebody who's creating a uh, heavy user on YouTube of, of creating content. I always have somebody to talk to. And then if you're a heavy user and doing well, they will also um, be very helpful to creators and, and stick up for us and, and do what they can because it's part of their business, the viewer, the creator. And uh, I love that with YouTube. But it's also a platform open to everybody. Anybody can get in here. And just like any job in any corporation, what I do, you have to have um, like a desire to be really the best in your, in your business, in your industry. And if you are one of those people, you too can be, get to the top. And I still believe this because I am you know, still starting new channels. And if you are not, then you struggle. If you are coming up with new ideas, not copying other people, but setting the bar, you will always break out and, and your content will find a home here on YouTube as well as other places too there's opportunities you shouldn't put your marbles all in one egg basket is that a phrase but um i i've loved my time here and th this channel came from a place of love and uh, i remember that all the time um especially in this time and as soon as they open up it'll probably go back to wanting to help people that are suffering here Japan has been very reliant on tourism for the last four or five years for its economy, more so than in the past. It just wasn't a destination until about 2015 um, when the Olympics were coming here. Of course, the attention turned, but it's, it's a place I think that you can fall in love with. People who come here once end up coming here twice and three times, and they repeat, and that's, um, you know, I... I've been uh, living here for 23 years now, and uh, I call this home. And now that I, I have Kanai and a wife, so I'm not going to be leaving. But um, there's so many wonderful things uh, about it. There's always going to be something to complain about where you live. But I always focus on the positives, and there's so many wonderful things about Japan that those little things that are irritating, especially to expats just moving here, think about what it's like where you were in the country that you're from. And... Um, life here is safe. The food is good. The people are friendly. Um, the work habits are tough, but society can be tough. But why wouldn't you want to live within the rules that keep you safe? So we do that. We try to contribute to a community, and it's been a pretty good life here. Um, yeah, now we're getting more questions then answers. <laughs> Ryan writes in here, once I want, uh, I went once and was hooked. Went back within eight months. I'd do it again, but 2020 happened. Yeah. A lot of people are, are really heartbroken because they had to cancel their trip, so they were coming back for a second or their third trip, and or fourth or fifth or sixth, and they can't do that. And it looks like probably you could in the fall, but I'm, I got a feeling that this will come back without a, a Wakuchin vaccine and um if it does it's you don't want to be locked back in a country again there's actually a couple of people that are still trapped here that can't get back to their home country and i'm going to have them on the show maybe tomorrow or the day after um if i can get in touch with them again um and uh you know japan is a good place if you are going to be locked down you could be here there's a couple of, of people that i know there's, there's another guy um who's supporting on on patreon who's in shinagawa and he's here and for another week or so before he's got to go back. And, you know, this is a good place to be, although um, we want to stay home. Um, my last name is Marvel. Can I get a shout out? Does that count? Toby! You know, yesterday, Kanai was freaked out. Do you know why? Do you want to know? Because she said that before an earthquake, the crows freak out. And then sure enough, two hours later, there was an earthquake. It was so loud that uh, we have s uh, maybe six or seven um, smartphones and devices all going off with alarms, annoying loud screeches. And um, uh, it could have been those crows that predicted it a couple hours later because they were going crazy. They go crazy for all sorts of things. Um, the carp, the koi would sometimes give uh, warning, which is why Japanese gardens had them where the shogun could see could hear oh the car carpet going crazy must be an earthquake tell the shogun and then 
word of mouth there was like a five second delay where he could go like this i guess and not get uh, pelted by falling rocks um uh rixley john you john you make me want to live in japan i really like how you get to go running at night without getting scared that someone will jump you yeah now i'm only scared that someone will cough on me because there's more people that are going out at night running you have to wear a mask when you run um and that's hard for me because it's hard to breathe so it's best either to go early in the morning or to go really late at night but you don't have that problem anywhere in japan basically you can go running at night and you could go walking around even as a single female although i would still always take precautions uh, tokyo is that place where you could walk at midnight through some of the most sketchy areas and probably be okay um i mean i hitchhiked the entire country crows are gathering in areas with a lot of the d word writes an elite prodigy x could be uh chris hansen do you have restrictions on your channel this time during quarantine less sponsorship and stuff um i was talking with my friend greg from life where i'm from and it's just really hard now he's got a he's working on a documentary um that he's been a really long one like a like a movie so he's got a lot of work to do but we were both talking about how it's really hard to go out and film content for um any channel for to, to continue because it's just one if you do drive around people see your license plate they see where you're from from tokyo and you're not welcome all right you're not welcome outside of tokyo if you're driving around so that's another problem um and it's just really uncomfortable for people outside of tokyo iwate prefecture still does not have an infection up in tohoku there's still at zero i'm sure that they might have one or two but just didn't go to the hospital but they're zero so uh, um traveling around it just makes people anxious and and it doesn't make them feel good and i would you feel happy seeing new york license plates in i don't know um iowa maybe not like you know gives you a little bit of worry and it's the same here in japan um so we i wanted to run a car and go to costco but there, none of the costcos are in actually tokyo so i just would feel like i don't really need to go so i can wait it out until the end of may maybe i hope i miss costco um but if you are alone i guess you can travel i'm i was thinking of going on my bicycle and riding out to the sea of japan and doing some uh live streams and trying to find content and just travel but uh, they extended the state of emergency so i'll sit this out for a little bit longer just like everybody else we're trying i'm inventing online shopping live streams which often did, it didn't go the way i wanted it to definitely check out tokyo cheapo uh tokyochipo.com i'm so thankful for greg lane for taking the time to join us this morning for evening and if you're watching in the united states uh the curve um likely record cold surely earthquakes 2021 probably going to be colder winter because last winter was so mild it was really warm this winter um didn't really need a jacket too often except in the north of Hokkaido. tokyo was pretty mild so i hope the curve i hope you're you're wrong but you it's you might not be off uh, we might have a, a milder s summer as well i would hope summers are pretty hot in japan but i appreciate greg lane for coming on i hope he can come on again um, i'll work out some of the pr the problems i was going to use this as my my um web camera but i couldn't get it connect to connect to the iphone and there is a slight echo it's hard to get used to uh doing this when you're broadcasting live but i do appreciate the questions um you bought something last night no no yesterday in the live stream i didn't buy anything but um, I probably will today. Um, we need to get to go shopping, and I, I can get something for for Kanai because uh, Ramsey Silent. Whenever he gives a live stream, I make sure I put that into getting something for Kanai, um, like a little present to bring a smile. That we have um, little boxes downstairs um, by the door, so the Yubin Kyoku, which is the delivery man, will ring the bell, and then he'll put. We'll, we'll tell him just put it in the the, the delivery boxes. The Yubinuke or the, the the place for it and says okay so he puts it in the box 
and then we go down and we put in a code and it opens it up and we can take the box out so it's in a secure place no um, doorstep uh, robbers Door doorstep durobo we don't have that here Kanai is um, working she is actually teaching ballet uh, her students in the other room and I'm doing this with you guys it's the only way that we can um, bring content we have to stay busy we have to stay producing content only Japan go is um, this is our this is my job so I have to keep this up one way or another I have to innovate which means that tomorrow I'm thinking about having um, oh, do eating up a can of a5 Wagyu and um, showing you some pretty luxury survival food so I'll, I'll bring that up to bring that to you tomorrow and can I and I have some more delivery food I also wanted to do things that were non food uh, I know that 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 might be an issue for a lot of people but not porch pirates that's right Joe uh, I wanted to do something that was non food um, now that you have OBS you can film b-roll on your trips and insert them into live streams from the balcony I'm still working at the kinks OBS is sort of finicky sometimes like I lost my main camera I lost this yesterday when I was live streaming so I'll find a way to, to make this better and better once you start something it evolves and it gets better and better it's just part of the the um, process but you have to take that first step of starting uh, today I'm also gonna be doing my first twitch live stream uh, the moderators will put it in here yeah, it's a can of a5 wagyu from Matsuzaka which is the most famous place I know it's crazy it costs fifty dollars for a can but it's gonna be pretty amazing I think I I'm pretty excited about that um, yeah everything is an evolution and I started a Twitch uh, channel just as an evolutionary thing because how do I know how the live streaming platform is evolving if I'm not on other platforms just to check it out and um, that's twitch.tv backslash uh, only in Japan TV is the name the curve writes in here industrial co2 decrease cold historic data yeah you know the you can go by the data and data doesn't lie so um, I, I don't know where you're getting the source from, but uh, it is worrying. I don't want a cold winter. I'm like an Okinawa guy. I'm half Indian. from uh, My mom's from Mumbai, so I prefer the warmth. I'm on that side, the warm side. My father is um, has European descent, so he's okay with the cold. But I'll tell you, I, I like a good, hot, swelterly, humid summer. Uh, it keeps me, keeps me going. Why don't you do a live critique of your first YouTube video? Um, I've done some of those called the director's tucks, uh, director's cuts, but I've got some new content uh, coming out. So it's going to be what is Twitch? Writes in Bronson. Bronson Twitch is a live streaming platform. It's owned by Amazon, uh, I believe it is, and uh, it's more for gamers, but it's also o open up to a lot of for just chatting and travel and interviews and all sorts of things so twitch is a, just a new platform um, it has more tools for live streaming and that's what I wanna kind of get used to to just check it out and see what it's like and we have about 300 followers maybe on twitch 200 300 um, you gotta start small and start humble I don't know it I'm a I'm a fish out of water over there but uh, if I use it a lot just like OBS the software I'm using right now then we will uh, eventually make some pretty good content over there on Twitch as well. Whether it's gaming, I don't know if can I. Sorry, this 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 live this camera is so bad. Uh, this is the uh, native camera on my iMac, but we'll find a way to uh, tweak this, get the live live um, better webcam going. Even if I've got to buy one now. Um. So thanks, everybody. Uh, I'm going to cut off here. If you do have any questions, leave it in the comments below. Definitely subscribe. I say definitely because I don't want you to miss a live. It's a different feeling when you watch this live. And you can leave a comment, and I can maybe see it. Um, I see. You can hear Kanai. I don't know. Her window's open on the other side. You can hear. Yeah, you can sort of hear her on the other side. She's teaching via... Um, this I've actually had Paolo on a live stream um, about six months ago on a rainy day during the rainy season no what no it was a cold rainy day in the fall maybe and we talked about that I met Paolo at uh, well years and years ago when 
um, his channel hadn't hit 100,000, and now he's at, uh, I think he's beyond only in Japan. So that's great that he's doing some really good things with his channel and growing at such a fast rate. But, um, yeah, nice guy. And uh, you can see him on the live stream on Only in Japan. Go. He's here. And he, I don't think he collaborates a lot um, with other YouTubers, and I don't as well. It's only if a YouTuber can add something special to a content um, that I do a collaboration. But I might do it a little bit more now um, with the new channel. So, What's your favorite city to visit outside of Tokyo? Um, wow, that's just too hard. I'll, can I? You know what? I should just do answer these questions in their own dedicated live stream because that's a hard one. I would have to say, whew, I love Hiroshima as a city to live in. Hiroshima, I loved living there. It was right on the on the inlet sea, beautiful sea, pristine water. Um, you can get to Shikoku pretty fast. It's on the Shinkansen line. It's about an hour and a half, two hours from uh, to Osaka, five hours to Tokyo. Just whoosh, you can whisk right out there. They have an airport that's connected to Korea. You have the ferries in Shimonoseki, not too far from Kyushu. Wonderful food. International airport was at Kansai, so you can get around from there in an hour and a half. So I liked it. I like the lifestyle in Hiroshima. Um, oh, if we did have the baby, congratulations. That's great. Yeah, I won't be collaborating with Kathy Cat. I don't think so. I don't think so. She's not. I don't know. I won't be collaborating with her. Um, there's some people that, um, uh, you know, they, they have to have something to add to um, this. I don't know. I don't. I shouldn't say no to anything. You never know. But I'm gonna be pickier because you, you can't collaborate with just anybody. You have to be pickier a little bit, sort of. Sometimes I don't know. Um, no ever says Antarctica. <laughs> <laughs> only in Antarctica. That's the only place I've never been to, too. The only continent. Um, favorite city to eat? To Osaka, Kyoto, Tokyo. The cities. But Aomori was really good for fish, especially Maguro. It was way better. Um, sushi in Aomori was amazing. And Hakodate. The cities uh, on the strait there between uh, Honshu and Hokkaido were fantastic for seafood. Absolutely incredible. Um, apartment tour, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so. Um, look, I'll collaborate with anybody. You guys can have suggestions. But to be honest, a collaboration video does not mean more people will go to your channel. It's just a fun thing to do for fans. Um, and when people come to visit from abroad, I have been living here for 23 years, so I can add in not just locations and helping them with Japanese to book locations and get some access, but I can also add to their story by knowing um, the area, the food, and whatnot, some of the things in, uh, that are essential about Japan. And that's why I, I do more collaborations from, from people who aren't from Japan. And then people that are from Japan, because what are they going to add? I've been living here longer than most of the people that I would collab with. So what are they really adding to the live stream other than you see them doing it as, as well? Are we friends off camera? Yeah, some of the people were, I, I know quite well, and we talk about YouTube, but working together, it's not about the collab that makes your content great. It's about the story. And if you have a good story, a compelling story, you kind of think as a director, what are they really adding? What does it mean to have somebody else in your story? And um, collabs are, are fun, but uh, you know if they're not adding something useful to it. Um, I have nothing against Kathy. I think she's great. But she never puts her true personality in her work. And you don't know who she is um, from the content that I've watched. Um, and I think I've told her in, in the past, um, you know, you should, you should show who more who you are. Um, never mind the cosplay, be who you are as yourself and, and show that and talk about that a little bit more. And, um, I think that's, the, uh, something that I would be looking at. I don't want somebody who's in goth on the show talking unless that was the topic. I do love Simon and Martina. They're wonderful. Very, very friendly. They're, they are who they are. They're like who they are on when you see them on the videos. They're the same. Very lively and very friendly and very optimistic and very fun. 
and very professional, um, which you shouldn't be talking about other people. Um, uh, let's let's call it here. I, have a, I think that's a great idea to talk to answer some of your questions and make those live streams. So that might be another format for the Only in Japan Go. A lot of people are curious about that. And I've lived in 16 different cities. I've been everywhere. I've literally been like om almost everywhere in Japan, including like little towns. It's crazy the amount of places, all the traveling I've done. Um, I'd, I'd like to get Hana. Honesty is the best policy. I agree with that. But also respect is a very good policy, and you should always respect um, people that even you disagree with. You should always be very respectful of them because you want that same respect on the other side. It's karma, plain and simple. You, you treat people the way that you want to be treated. And um, I try ve my very hardest to live with that, the curve. Stay safe and healthy. Uh, did my homework. Cold, tra cold, cold traveling this winter. Uh, around 24 uh, Fahrenheit in Malaysia in 2009. Wow, really? Um, who knew? Much love, jo John. Much love. Thank you so much for the support. Um, treat people with respect. That means even right now, if you go out, wear a mask, just because you might not think you have it, but other people don't know that you don't have it, and it just makes other people feel comfortable. And if you're the type of person that are thinking about other people like that, then you're always going to make friends and be successful um, because... We all are in this together. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. See you in the next live stream. Maybe tonight. I'm not sure, but I'll try to give you a, a, a better heads up. Bye.